Welcome to The Move, guys. I'm Jay, and we got to talk about rights, responsibilities, and gender. I consider myself a progressive libertarian. I don't particularly care what you decide you want to do with your life. It's yours, and as long as you aren't hurting anyone else, then you have my blessing. But this video is about the overall effects of feminism and gynocentrism, particularly in urban slash black communities. Now, before we begin, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. Hashtag not all right up there in the corner. I'm not. Please don't take it personal. This is just what's been observed. Donna Brazil, Simone Sanders, Maxine Waters, Anna Navarro, and countless other women of color pressed hard for Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party during the presidential election, ignoring the crime bill, NAFTA, super predator remarks, and other past sins that helped to nurture in the deterioration of the situations in urban zones. Women can easily run a man's name through the mud and financially cripple him through accusations, allegations, child support, and alimony via court system with standards built on traditional notions in what is far from a traditional world. These laws were put in place by men with focus on being uh, with the focus being on our potential cruelty and the virtues of women in the 1940s and 50s. It's current year and it don't work like that no more. I get to use my favorite analogy. Consider society an NBA team. Women went from playing like Scottie Pippen to Stefan Marbury. Scotty was an egoless player, whatever needed to be done to win. He went out and did it with little to no fanfare, whereas Mr. Starberry would dribble for 20 seconds and pass with four left to shoot. Not very considerate. And an awful strategy in winning a championship. Yet they fit so perfectly in the scenario because there is absolutely no question that Stephon Marbury belonged in the league and had insane talent, which can be said of women as a collective. I've had enough women supervisors and bosses to attest to the capacities and capabilities of the quote fair unquote sex. The opportunity to do with your life as you please is a human right. And I've encountered endless women who are far smarter and cunning than myself. But that leads us into personal choice and the difference between equal opportunity and equal outcome. The opportunity is there for almost all American citizens. If you want, right now, you can pack up and go wherever you need to be to achieve what you like. In theory, I know money is a thing, but if it weren't, you could literally do whatever, regardless of race or gender, as long as you're an American citizen. So, if you want to see a female CEO, then go be a female CEO. If you want to see the first black curling champion, go and be the first black curling champion. There is almost nothing besides probably money stopping you. So, when there's this big cry because of a lack of gender equality, it is for the outcome and not opportunity. Look, I hate to burst your bubble, but we will never have equality of outcome. And that's a great Thing, because we should all want the best slash most qualified, regardless of superficial features such as gender, race, religion, creed, whatever. Just be the best at what you do and damn it, I want you there. A world with engineered equality is not a world you'd want to live in. Obviously, at some point, the Gazorpians became so evolved that they replaced females with birthing machines. The resultant lack of distraction and henpecking allowed them to focus entirely on war, so they bombed themselves back to the Stone Age, and now they just fight with each other over fake <laughs> with sticks and rocks all day long. You think it's efficient to get rid of women? You ever see a line for the men's room? Are you, he do you, li you hear me, Summer? I'll do you even one better, Rick. Have you ever seen a women's restroom after an event? It's unholy. I used to work the Terrace Ballroom in Newark and at a Target in California, so it isn't a race or a cultural thing. Women can be far more disgusting than men. Hashtag equality. We like to shit on the past, but the past got us where we are. I myself easily grow bored with traditions, particularly of the religious variety, but to deny their role in cultivating the society, freedoms, and comforts that we currently enjoy would be intellectually disingenuous. During the 50s and 60s and the time of segregation, the black family was undeniably at its strongest. Even at the beginning of integration, it wasn't so bad. There was still that structure of the nuclear family until the welfare state came along. And I'll let Tick Trick Daddy take it from here. We were set up. This, this, this was well orchestrated. 
they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to free the slaves. We're going to leave them certain land and certain properties, knowing that we did not allow them to read, write, spell, knowing that we did not allow them no schooling. And when we did give them schooling, it was segregated. So we're going to leave them property, not knowing that five, ten years from now, that we're going to take the property from them because they didn't pay their taxes. OK, we went from that to, OK, now that's all from welfare. That's all from WIC. That's all from food stamps. Free health care was they call Medicaid. OK, now let's build a project. This is a this is a ghetto environment to the fullest. But we're going to give them things like one dollar rent. Free park and recreation for their kids, for summer programs. But hold on. You can't have no man staying with you. You can't have no man. So as growing up as Every year, or every other year, I would meet a different guy as a mentor. It was a blessing. All of which who accepted a role at the time that they, know, they did not know it was impossible for them to play. A, a, a position that they did not know that was impossible for them to keep because if a man lived with you, you would get evicted and lose your hood. If your child caught a charge, you have to sign custody over to this child to another parent, a family member, or somebody close that's not living in the hood, and you have to reassign their schools and all this. So while I'm thinking, all these men are going to do the same thing. They're going to get my mama pregnant, and they're going to run out of her life. I didn't realize all this because we were young. You know, that's not a story that I can personally relate to because I had my father in my life until the moment he passed away. But too many of our young men can relate to that story. So the dad's gone because the system has made him useful for just one thing and created a praying mantis effect amongst the women who, by the way, are the most educated. And speaking of the educational system, here is author and intellectual Christina Hoff Summers on the state of boys in the, in, the, in the educational system way back in 2000. First thing I will say is that there's a surprising amount of hostility towards boys in this society. To put it bluntly, boys are politically incorrect. Now, I'll begin by telling a brief story of something that happened during a television debate I had with this celebrity lawyer, Gloria Allred. Um, Alred was um, representing a 14-year-old girl named Katrina who was suing the Boy Scouts for excluding girls. Um, girls 15 and older could, can join the Explorer Scouts, which is co-ed, but Al Alred, Gloria Alred, was outraged that girls younger than 15 were not allowed in. And she referred to same-sex scouting as gender apartheid. Uh, well, I was there to defend the Boy Scouts, and I told her that young boys and girls have rather different preferences. And I gave her a kind of homespun example. Um, so, some of the best research I found in the course of doing my book was by toy companies, because toy companies don't have an agenda. They want to sell toys. And I, I told Ms. Allred about Hasbro Toys. Uh, it's a major toy manufacturing company that tested a playhouse that they wanted to sell to both boys and girls. So they brought the children into their fun lab in Providence, Rhode Island, and the girls came in and played constructively with the house. They played dolls, they put the baby in the baby buggy. The boys came in and catapulted the toy baby carriage from the roof. And the general manager was sort of surprised, but she said, well, boys and girls really are different. Anyway, I told this to Miss Alred on our, it was a debate on crossfire or equal time. Uh, and I thought she would be amused. She was not amused. This made her very angry. She was shocked by the boys' catapulting behavior. She took it as a sign of potential violence. And she said, and I quote, if there are boys who catapult baby carriages off the roofs of dollhouses, that's just one more argument we need to be socializing boys at an earlier age, perhaps to be playing with dolls, end quote. Now, Ms. Alred has powerful allies among educators. Uh, Gloria Steinem, the feminist leader, once said that, or she often says, that we need to raise boys more likely, like we raise girls. And strangely enough, many schools are now following that advice. It's all social engineering. And for young black men, there has been a concentrated effort to strip away all semblance of masculinity from them. 
This summer, I came across a single mother who wanted me to shake her hand as if she were a man, despite having three feet of titty meat dangling in front of my face. When I refused, she forbade her super effeminate son from speaking to me. But I'm using it as an example because in the black community, feminism has left women believing that there is absolutely no difference between men and women, when science, biology, and God beg to disagree. Over 70% of kids are born out of the wedlock in our communities. A comparably high percentage of single mothers will never get married in their lifetime. And the whole while, the women of our communities continue to encourage each other to do this to their children. Look, I know the go-to line is to say that men should take care of the responsibilities it takes two to make a kid and countless other cliches that frame women as innocent victims. But the problem with that one-sided barrage of blame is that men have no reproductive rights and women set the standards. If men had to be great guys in order to smash, that's what we would be. Let's wrap this up. 90% of my audience is guys and I promised this video for a while, so I'm a man of my word. Gentlemen, you are not crazy. The misandry is institutionalized to a dangerous degree, and I want you to be aware of it. Marriage has a 60% divorce rate, and 80% are filed by the woman who can just decide she doesn't love you anymore, which is her right, but brother, you are left incredibly vulnerable. Funny side notes, Stephon Marbury is attempting an NBA comeback, wish him the best in that. I'm positive he can help someone off the bench. And Scottie Pippen has been in the news because of his wife recently taking back the divorce papers. After reportedly being forced to apologize for her cheating. It might be cheaper to keep her, but actually it's better to have never met her. I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, sub, I'm out. 50, 60 kids in one classroom. They paying the teachers between thirty and forty thousand dollars. That ain't even enough money for them to pay back that high ass loan that they got the the uh, education degree in.